news tonight. Federal government declares one-day public holiday. Political analysts advocate financial independence for state independent electoral commission rather than scrapping it. Good evening, you are welcome to NTAJ Body News at 7. I am Titi Okay. Thanks for staying tuned with us. Now, the news and details. President Bola Tinobu will tomorrow, Wednesday, June 12, 2024, address the nation in a broadcast on the occasion of democracy. The report. Radio and other electronic media outlets are enjoined to plug into the network services of the Nigerian Television Authority and the Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, FRCN, for the broadcast. The federal government has declared Wednesday, 12th June 2024, a public holiday day to commemorate this year's Democracy Day. The report. The Minister of Interior, Lubumi Tunjiojo, who made the declaration on behalf of the federal government, congratulates Nigerians on the occasion. Tunjiojo reiterates President Bola Tunubu's commitment to positive reforms to revive the nation's economy and enhance security. While wishing Nigerians a happy Democracy Day, the Minister calls on Nigerians and friends of Nigeria to appreciate the progress that has been made and look forward to a better future for the nation's democracy. Vice President Senator Kashim Shetima is expected as the special guest of honor at the annual Jujoba Festival, which comes up on the 18th of June 2024. And Tony Gandoni reports that the chairman of the 2024 Jujoba Festival Planning Committee, Chief Olu Okuboyejo, announced this at a press conference to herald the annual cultural festival. The report. In the press at Aujales Palace, chairman of the 2024 Judioba Festival Central Committee, Chief Olu Okuboejo, went down the memory lane of the historical background of the annual cultural festival. According to Chief Okuboejo, the major reason for the annual gathering is to maintain religious harmony among all religious adherents and promote the cultural heritage and traditions of the Jebus, which has been in existence for over 200 years. The chairman pointed out that the Aujale and paramount ruler of Ijebu land, Obasiki Adetona has successfully recasted the festival into an acceptable global festival for a while now. It is a well established fact that the Oba festival is a very spectacular celebration of the Jebu people of southwest Nigeria, which took its advent in Islam but has now grown tremendously in magnitude to be celebrated in the present times by all and sundry. That is Muslims, Christians, and the traditionalists. Speaking on the theme, Peace, Unity, and Harmony, Our Gifts, the coordinator of 2024 Udioba Festival, Chief Fasi Yusuf, said this year's celebration is a milestone in the history of the event due to the uniqueness of the celebration of both 98th birthday and 64th coronation anniversary of Obasikiru Kayode Adetona the Yaudale and Paramount Ruler of Ijebu Land, which was marked this year. We are teaching other communities, other nationalities, a lesson in religious harmony, a lesson in religious tolerance, a lesson in religious I mean, mutual coexistence. Here we are, we don't uh, discriminate, we welcome people as long as uh, they are willing to abide with our culture and tradition and uh, to bring uh, harmony, peace and concord to the community. In their goodwill messages, sponsors of the annual event, including the state government, expressed their continuous readiness to key into the avenue to promote culture and tradition, as well as peaceful coexistence among Igbo people and Nigerians at large. It is with joy and gladness to mention that the Ogun state government, through the Ministry of Culture and Tourism, have consistently and been actively involved in the co-sponsoring of the annual celebration of the Ojibwa Festival by assuring that this year's celebration will not be an exception as it promises to be more ostentatious and elegant and exciting. It's a truly Nigerian brand. And then we try to collaborate with the different ethnic groups in the sponsorship and partnership of the festivals, major festivals in Nigeria. 
Oji Deba is one of the biggest cultural festivals in the country. Hence, it's just right that look, we partner with this big festival. The committee promised a successful and heat free celebration in Ijebuode, Anthony Gandonu, NTA News. Nigeria has a major role to play in delivering the global promise to end the female genital mutilation FGM by 2030. Towards this end, strategic efforts must be intensified, starting with proper enforcement of Child Rights Act 2023 in the country. Nigeria's First Lady Oluremi Tinubu stated this at the opening ceremony of the annual technical consultation on ending FGM jointly organized by the UNFPA and UNICEF in Nigeria. State House correspondents at the NATO will report. All with a clear message that female genital mutilation is no longer an option. I wish I could wear my pants as I would wear a dress. I wish I was addressed by my shame like the name I wish not to see. And in a voice that carried so loud, Asset in this rendition not only conveyed the pain and odors of victims, but also reminded the audience gathered in the room for the annual technical consultation on NDFGA that Nigeria bears a huge burden on the scourge globally. The goal of this technical consultation, attended by participants from 21 African countries, including Nigeria, is to really appraise ongoing efforts and share knowledge towards ending the practice by 2030. And this, the just posted on the must start with strengthening legal frameworks and intensifying advocacy. I charge us to collaborate with the first ladies of the various states in Nigeria and other stakeholders to critically address this harmful practice. This collaboration will help mobilize resources, share these practices, and create a sustainable movement against gender-based violence and female genital mutilation. Nigeria's Vice President Kashim Shatima, represented, says all stakeholders must work to ensure that the girl child is not denied the protection provided for her by the Nigerian Constitution. We must establish more centers that offer medical care, psychological support, and legal assistance to survivors of FGMs. We recognize that sources require coordinated support, committees, as well as valuable partners at the global with about 230 million women and girls already under the crude knife of FGM across the globe, the United Nations is keen about providing support for victims. It's a collective responsibility. We will access the corresponding in Together, we can create the way FGM is eliminated. Join the today. In the next three days, these experts hope to come up with new propositions that will help the world, particularly Africa, find a balance between culture and reality where it concerns women and their sexual health. In Abuja, Adele Itaewo, NT News. Political commentators have suggested that given the state in the private electoral commission financial and operational independence would be more effective in the strengthening in the strengthening the electoral process rather than scrapping the commission. This was why discussing proposed scrapping of state in the Prime Electoral Commission on Good Morning Nigeria. It came in Williams as the report. Controversy has surrounded the conduct of elections handled by State Independent Electoral Commission, leading to allegations that they are being influenced and controlled by state governors to manipulate elections. These prompted the Attorney General of the Federation, Latif Fagbemi, to propose last month that State Independent Electoral Commissions be abolished and their functions handed over to the INEC. Most of the discussions on the program, however, expressed diverse views and considered the Attorney General's proposition undemocratic and counterproductive. The laws have been reviewed, the Electoral Act has been reviewed from Electoral Act 2002, Electoral Act 2006, Electoral Act 2010 as amended, and then the Electoral Act uh, 2022. Now, when you now subject the sex to scrutiny, you will not see any body of laws and the PNO and the guiding their, their, their conduct. 
So a lot of things need to be done. We must have state elections to continue to subsist that are setting fundamental reforms. In fact, it should be constitutional so that the issue of uh, local government autonomy will be strengthened through electioneering. They acknowledged some of the alleged shortcomings of the sex, such as lack of transparency, political partisanship of staff, and lack of facilities, but were of the opinion that scrapping the commissions is not the way out, while more burden should not be put on INEC. They advise that sex should be funded through the first line charge, while the appointment of chairman should be based on integrity and merit, and not at the pleasure of state governors. So the same way we are clamoring for the appointment, the removal of the power to appoint the INEC chairman and national commissioners and resident electoral commissioners from the president in line with Justice Away's recommendations, is the same clamor for the states, um, um, for the state. So governors should should not have the power to appoint their students, their loyalists, into the state independent electoral commissions. So the elections, if they know that somebody assaults them, that somebody should go and investigate, somebody will want to call them and have them held as fucking accounts. They further called on voters to demand accountability from their leaders and the political process as a whole. In Apuja, Ekemeni Williams, NT News. You are still watching NTJ Voodoo News at 7. We'll be back shortly after the break. Don't scurry away. Is there a Bro, I did tell you, this match is zero. Uh, if I win you, something will come out. Don't play with me. Passport, passport. Ah. You know what you got to do. Bro. Now we got this match. <sighs> Keep the banter going. Glow. Borrow me credit and data. Dial star 303 hash to borrow airtime or data and pay later. Is there ready? <laughs> Go on, no Power your relentless ambition with ultra high speed data. Glow Unlimited. Thanks for watching. 25 years of enduring democracy in Nigeria is worth celebrating even in the face of some perceived human rights abuses. This is the position of National Endowment for Democracy in collaboration with Policy and Legal Advocacy Center at a dialogue session on exploring remedies for human rights abuses. Timothy Yusuf reports. It's 25 years of uninterrupted democratic rule in Nigeria. This is believed by many lovers of democracy and members of the civil society organizations community that are there to be a pleasant development. The comparison of issues of human rights abuses during military rule and the last 25 years of democracy is the focus of this dialogue session convened by the National Endowment for Democracy in conjunction with Policy and Legal Advocacy Center, a civil society organization. Our citizens' confidence in our democracy remains. And for a lot of us who remember the brutality of military dictatorship in this country, you would never for one moment wish to see an end to civilian rule. Discussants believe that responses to accountability and discipline of human rights offenders have increased and a welcome development. Timothy Yusuf, NT News. President Bola Tinobu has extended his sincere condolences to His Excellency President Lazarus Chakwira and the people of Malawi over the passing of Vice President Salos Chilima and other officials in a plane crash. The report. The message by the special advisor to the president on media and publicity, President Tinobu commiserates with the families of the deceased over this deeply distressing incident which happened on a mournful Monday, June 10, 2024. The president assures the Malawian nation of Nigeria's support during this time of mourning and prays for the repose of the soul of the departed. Let's join gift George for trending in the sporting world on sports updates. That's all we have for you for tonight. So we'll meet next time. I am Titi Layoke. Thanks for staying to with us. Good night.